Hello, welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a look at Regolof Linux 19.10. So this is built on top of Ubuntu 19.10 and it features the i3 Windows Manager in console, if you like, with GNOME. So it uses the GNOME settings to control a lot of the aspects that you usually do with the configuration files. So what we're going to quickly do is pop open Super Shift and that. And here is their default sort of key bindings, if you like. It didn't let me change the modifier key during installation, so it's all on Super. Um, usually you could choose between super and alt. I'm sure you can change that if you really wanted to now by going through the settings But what we're going to do is we're going to close this off So I'll, if you haven't used i3 before it's fairly sort of Straightforward in principle. So what you're going to do is it will split things and it won't waste any screen real estate Apart from this one I can see has gaps So that's just on a straight vertical split So if we wanted to sort of change things up a bit we can do a little horizontal split like that and then we could open up something and if we didn't want to use our keyboard to jump to a different one we could use the modifier key and the directional key and then that will bring us there and then we can do the same here and as I said it will keep things looking all nice and neat for you so if you wanted to get rid of some of these things you would go to modifier key shift and Q and like you can see you can then close things like that so the wallpaper aspects and just overall settings can all be controlled during the GNOME settings which is quite an interesting way of doing things because usually of i3 you'd aim to slim things down and get it quite lightweight so as you can see in the terminal there in htop we are using quite a bit of RAM there 1.3 gig I have got a couple of windows open on the third workspace though so let's close that and now it's going to open up their dRUN menu using their modifier key which is super and space so here you can see all, all of the applications that are installed and you can also do shut down and log out and things from here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top and we're just going to go through what it comes installed with. So you've got your settings, which is GNOME settings. You've got language support, disks, software updates, transmission, log out, reboot, shut down. Startup applications can all be edited through there as well. Very interesting. Oh, so it opens up GNOME things in a floating window by the looks of it. Let's open up the GNOME settings. So usually you'd install a program like Nitrogen or something to install your wallpapers and sort of, then you'd add a command to sort of restore it up boot. But this is all done using GNOME settings, which is an interesting way of doing it. So let's pop open a different wallpaper. For example, let's go for, let's just go for that for argument's sake. And there you go, so that's set the background for you and that should remember it after a reboot and it seems to be it opens up the GNOME settings in a floating window. So let's pop open to my workspace number 3 using the modifier key at number 3. Um, so the regolith configuration file, so usually you do an E3 configuration file but I think they have some different locations there. So I've got it open here. So if we jump into i3 and then we'll just do a quick ls. So there's our config file. So let's open up our config file and just have a look. We don't have Vim installed, so let's very quickly install Vim. Okay. And then let's do the same command that we just did. Vim config. So this is their config file. So you can change the modifier keys here as well. Um, what do we have? Color values. Yep, yep, yep use mouse where is their bar settings is the bar settings in here I'm sure it is toggle tab switch workspace aha uh -huh, so they've got some key combinations for your restarting um, and logging out and stuff so modifier key which is Windows plus shift plus E will log an out a session and then doing the same with B will reboot and then doing the same with P will power off interesting you can also put it to sleep using modifier and escape there's some resize things here disable title bar windows border colors so you can mess around with the colors here i've got my um i3 configuration file saved in um in an online cloud i might see what it looks like on here i might not though as well um the bar configuration right so we could change the way the bars set i can't remember how you put it at the top I think it's like bar top or something it's been a long while since I've used i3 so you can edit things there um, okay that seems to be their configuration file what I'm gonna do is make a copy of this because I'll probably will play around with this a bit later and, and change a few things so we're gonna exit that now 
Right, so where are we? So I'm going to CP config and I'm just going to chuck that into my documents for the moment. My keyboard's in a very awkward place for me to type on for while we do these videos. Right, so I've copied that for later, so I can have a little look around with that later. Let's pop open to a different workspace now. We'll go to number four. Oh, wrong button. So as I'm used to it being alt. So we go to number four, and then let's open up the D run menu again. Um, so as I say, it's using Firefox as your web browser. Files, I'm going to assume, is Nautilus. Yep. And what was the shortcut to open up Nautilus in the command here? So file browser, super shift and N for Nautilus, that makes sense. So let's get rid of that. So let's open up a couple of normal Nautiluses. Does it only open up one window? Let's go onto a different workspace and try that again. No. So if I was to close that, didn't do it. Okay, so it works for the one. So if we wanted to open something in a new window, then let's go to open a new window. And there you go, you can see it's split there. So if we wanted to change the way that was splitting, so if we do like a horizontal split, let's open up another new window now. And then there you go, it will split it horizontally. So it's um, it's fairly easy once you get used to the keyboard controls. I mean, I haven't used it in a long while and it sort of doesn't take you that long to get reacquainted with it. So what we're gonna do now is close this. I'm just gonna go into details here and see what it says. Okay, that's all good. So what else can we really control here? I'm going to assume you can control most of the things. So notifications, how does your notifications work? Let's click that bell. So if you had a notification, I assume it would just appear there. Ooh, can't get rid of that now. Let's try escape. There we go. So it uses Dejard up as well for your backups. So let's just open that up and see how that looks on here. There we go. So it seems to be a lot of the GNOME stuff will open as floating windows. So let's open up another program and see. So what other GNOME stuff have we got here? Let's open up software. GNOME software. Oh, I spelled that completely wrong. Oh, what's this weird black bar there? <laughs> let's do that again. Software. Okay, so it's opened that up in full screen. So I'm going to assume that's um, yeah, that's splitting it the way it should. Right, so let's install something and, and see how it handles all of that with the GNOME software store. Um, what do we need? I'll tell you what, let's just grab Tmux. Not that you'd really need Tmux on i3, but I like to just be a bit funny like that. I like Tmux as well, just because you can put things into the background. So when I do sort of downloads with wget or transmission CLI, I tend to use do it in a Tmux thing so I can close it and know it's still safe. So let's pop open the fourth desktop, let's open that and let's go to Tmux new T and we'll just call it home. What do you mean? Terminal failed, missing or unstable terminal. Unsuitable terminal, okay, so it doesn't seem to like the regular Linux terminal. Interesting. Um, that is interesting actually, I wonder if we just go Tmux in. Hmm, I'll have a look at that later as to why that's not working. So I'm just going to remove that for now. I'll, um, I'll have a look at a bit of that later. So let's get rid of that. So let's close that. Right, so shutting down and restarting. So let's see how that all handles it because I want to see what the RAM is at boot because as I said, i3 does aim to be quite a lightweight. Well, it is a lightweight tiling manager. So I'm going to assume it's going to be quite heavy for an i3 setup. So what we're going to do is open up their modifier keys again. And then let's see how we shut things down. We did have a look, but I've already forgotten. Is that all we can do? Is that all of it? Let's go to launch. Here we go. So to shut, we want to do a straight reboot. So super shift and B. All right, let's try that. Super shift B. There we go. So it will let us go to the restart, cancel, or lock screen. Right, I'm just going to pause the video there, and then we're going to restart and see what RAM we're getting at boot. Okay, so we are using 750. 700 megabytes at boot which as I say is quite high for an i3 thing but I don't think this is aiming to be the light, lightest i3 setup so we're under 700 megabytes now so kind of what you'd expect from a normal GNOME installation really on Ubuntu so let's close that now right I'm just going to sort of have a little final look at this bar here and what they've got down here but we're going to wrap the video up there and I'm, <clears throat> I will do a follow up video on this though because I'm going to have a little look at just sort of everything that this encompasses because I'm quite interested in how they've done it with GNOME. So at the bottom we have our clock which will open up the GNOME date and time, okay. And then we have our calendar I do believe. What is that? That's not opening up anything. 
Um, here is our notifications. We looked at that one already. Um, CPU utilization. There we go. So doing that will open up system monitor. Okay, let's close that. So GNOME settings appears to always be floating. So as you can see there, we've just opened up something which has kicked our network monitor into usage. So we were just using 7.4 down and 4.3 up. Here is your sort of connections. So we are connected to Ethernet, so we don't need to worry about that. And then again, that will just open up your modifier keys. But very interesting way of setting things up and I will do a follow up video on this because I'm quite interested to be honest um, I wouldn't usually set up an i3 setup like this but I think it's an interesting way of doing it and it might get people using i3 actually so thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one